Cade, as you know, I'm on the county board, and Rod is also. Um, you got your opponents, proponents on everything. You got negatives and positives in everything. I just firmly believe that the wind farm is a good idea for money, revenue, and uh, where my wife's from up in Minnesota, they've had one for 30 years and they don't have any problem with it up there. They're building more and they got a less setback than what we're, the 1500, they got less setback than that. They got 1400 and less. 1500 I'm pretty comfortable with. Um, I think it's, this county broke or it has been. We're starting to come out of the hole a little bit. But I think the revenue is very important. We just used $300,000 plus to pay back a back cost that we had built up from the health insurance issue over at the county. That money wouldn't have been there had not the wind farm been there over there at Sheldon. Um, okay, I think everybody, you say certain people are going to be inconvenienced a little bit. That's true. I understand that. But also, just where I live, over on the west side of town, I'll tell you what. We're a little bit inconvenienced by the trains making noise all night, but we realize that they're there, and that's the livelihood of the nation, and we understand that. And some nights we're kept kept awake by the grain elevator, which is almost a half half mile away, but that's a farmer's livelihood there too. We understand that. We can put up a little bit of inconvenience for, for the betterment of things. That's all I've got to say. Uh, I guess I'd have to agree with him. I mean. Uh, <coughs> You know, if the wind, fill, wind farms is a um, is something right now that's a tax, going to generate some tax money coming into the township, we need to take full advantage of that. We need um, better schools. If that's going to help us do that, that'd be great. I don't see anything wrong with it. It's just like what he said with the railroad. The interstate was another example. When it came through here, it messed up a lot of farms messed up a lot of farm ground. If we were to um, said no to the uh, exchange here, what would we have done then? The city would have died. There, there's examples of that to the north of us. So I mean, we've got a perfect opportunity here to generate more income. And you, you put a wind farm against a landfill, against um, other techs like Braidwood with a nuclear plant. What would you rather have? Wind farm? nuclear plant, landfill. I mean, that's a no-brainer. So, you know, that's my my point. Very clean energy, too. Right. And you're using a natural resource. And I'm Sue Brown. I'm on the uh, township zoning board. Uh, you're saying, like, we're trying to keep it out. And that's not the case. We're saying, bring it on. But we want to protect people. And in this township, we have more people living in the country who don't own the farm ground behind their houses. And they are under another zoning class called the uh, rural estates. And they pay through the nose for the privilege of living in the country. And the landowners, in many cases, are out of state. And just on my road alone, starting the 1700 North Road between K&H and the motel, and you go east, the very first house is in town, but the ground behind it is rural. It's county, it's township. It's not the city of Gilman. That person, that family living there could have one of these right, right back there. And there's a tremendous difference in 500 feet when it comes to the wind application. We drive farther down the road within the first mile and you look to the south, there's one house that's also a farmstead that people have bought and fixed up. And you look north and there's two. And the one right by the cemetery, for those of you who live around here, uh, on the south side of the road, the man owns like five or seven acres. He's fixed that place up. Across the road is the new McTaggart house. That is part of a farm go back to the 1700 North Road and you proceed for about a mile and there are, let's see, one, two, three, there's four more. So seven out of eight houses within two miles of Gilman are owned by these people with rural estates. 
They have no say. The, the, the big win-win people are the generating company and the landowners who get the money. And the schools. Yeah, okay, but we're saying there again, Jed, we're not saying, we're not going to keep you out, but we want a buffer that is farther than what the counties uh, passed because of the flicker, because of the constant noise. And you, if you haven't, most of you probably have never been to the Sheldon and the Stockland area now that they're operating to hear what goes on. We've sat under them it. before. We've sat under them before. Well, yeah. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna hold this. We've we're, as soon as she's gonna do her, her okay. public statement, and then we're done. That's gonna be the way we do this. So go ahead and finish. This. But but anyhow, we <coughs> feel that these people should have a right. If, if the company comes in and says, we want to put it in 1,500 feet and they sign, fine. But if they come in and they say, wait a minute, because what happens, what you're not thinking of is the devaluation of those beautiful home sites out there. And I'm not talking just my road. If you continue on, you have the Irish Oak subdivision and you turn around and you go back to Highway 24 and there's four or five beautiful home sites there and they're all in the same situation. They own their few acres but in front of them and behind them, it's out of area landowners. And this goes all the way through our township. And a road south of me, where I live, south of 1700, is the, the uh, boundary line between an Arga township and Douglas township. And one side of the road is ours, and the other is, is an Argus. But in that timbered area, there's houses back there that people don't even know are there this time of year because you can't see them. And it's an immediate 50% devaluation. And we've, we've done a lot of research, talked to people who are living under them now, who say what it's a nightmare, talked to people at Sheldon who say if we'd have known it was going to be like this, we just wouldn't do it. But we are not saying you can't come in. And that is the word that has gotten out and got everybody riled up, and that's not the case at all. But also, these things, a lot of them are short short-lived and say you get a bunch of money for the school that can come to an end times change economies change technology changes all that big money from the windmills that you think you're going to get would stop and then we'd be stuck with a new school and the same declining population in Iroquois County to pay for it and it could be in a worse situation than that but that's my main thing that I wanted to say is we are not keeping them out. We are giving the property owner the right to negotiate a settlement because of the devaluation of their property and the noise that they're going to have to put up with. And I'd appreciate it if, if uh, the uh, school superintendent would ask the, the uh, bus driver, the Paul Calkin, who I understand works with setting the bus routes, have him take her on a ride around Douglas Township, in fact, all the townships, and see what the heck is out there. I know the townships pretty well. <laughs> you know, and, and see see these homes. And that's that's all we're, what we're doing. And, and thank God that they're doing it. The township board. Giving us an out. Giving us a right to protect our property rights. Okay. okay, I'm going to make one quick comment. My only comment is, what everyone always forgets is, this is waivable setback by the landowner. If you are the landowner, you can waive your right up to 1.1 times the height of the tower under the county ordinance. That's in stone. It's county ordinance. Nobody wants to remember that. 1.1 times the height. You can put a tower if you want it on your property, 440 foot from your house. That's what you have a right to do. So it's a waivable setback. Okay, thank you all for attending. Thanks for your input. We appreciate it. And we hope you come back. Anytime. Thank you.